It's edgy. It's honest. It's colourful. It's bold. It's surprising. It's dangerous. And it's intense. Screw is set in a category B, male prison, and the series charts the day-to-day -day world of a group of screws who are led by a character called Lee Henry, who's the senior officer on the wing. What the fuck is that, Yogi? Oh, has it always been that shape? She sort of runs the wing according to her own rules. She's been in the service for about 20 years, so she's a career officer, and she believes passionately that there is something to be gained by treating prisoners and the men with respect and dignity. Easy to be cynical. Oh, I didn't know what. Prisons aren't full of bad people, they're full of people who've done bad things. We meet Lee when she is about to be considered for promotion to custodial manager of the wing. There's also been um, issues on the wing uh, in terms of the men not being allowed out to socialise because there's just not enough staff, there's a staff shortage. And then she starts to get um, observed uh, in order to get this promotion. You're in a somewhat tricky position, aren't you? Given that the vacant CM role effectively makes your current one redundant. A new recruit comes in in the form of Rose. We're all locking again. Have you got something better to do? No, but when do I get my induction? What do you want to know? Well, uh, I don't know what I don't know. It's a cat bee prison. Four main wings holding a thousand adult males. C wing takes prisoners doing anything from three weeks to five years, plus those nobody else wants, OK? He is a fascist. He's very good at adapting to new surroundings, and she's a lot better at doing things like that than she realises. I think she underestimates herself and we see her grow throughout the series. And Rose's relationship with Lee is quite strained. Sort Bilal now. Put him in that single and stay out of my sight. I think they're quite similar people in certain ways, which I think where some of the clashing comes from. I think they're both quite strong-headed. It's just a really interesting relationship. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship as well, I think. And I think Rose admires her without realising that she admires her or realising the reasons why. I could have got all that on the internet. Exactly. You'll be able to get your whole qualification there soon. Could you reread PSO 1600 while you're online? Once you've drawn your baton, you've already lost. She really feels that she's working within a system that is broken. And so she is trying... She's sort of writing her own rules. Um, and that can sometimes work for her and sometimes work against her. She's a very compassionate woman towards the prisoners. She keeps all of her colleagues at arm's length. Now, if this ain't cause to finally get you out of the lady petrol, I don't know what it is. I can't. I know I need to go home. Great, let's do that. I've only waited seven years for an invite round your gaff, so... No. The kitchen still isn't finished, and... Oh, you fucking cheer up. Over the, across the series, we are also um, following the stories of the other prison officer characters who form what for me is, I refer to as our family really, which is a fantastic group of characters and actors. Why would you want to be a prison officer? Because I'm really good at shutting up dickheads. Oh. <laughs> Jackie Stokes, that's Gary, Ali and Don. Welcome to hell. All right. Fantastic. Gary thinks that people are in prison to be punished and that that's not always the case. And he absolutely believes in his mission to keep the public safe. And, um, and, that's, and that's what he intends to do at all costs. Unless you know you can deliver, it's best not to promise. Better to say, I'll look into it. Or just no. Yeah, because a no can become a yes, but go the other way and you are fucked. Jackie's our mother of the wing in some ways. Jackie believes that everybody deserves a mom, no matter what they've done. Uh, takes people at face value and and can talk to just about anybody. And if that fails, she's, uh, she's, she's, she's pretty good when it kicks off as well. Ali is, um, is a true crime fanatic. Are oh, you left handed? You trying to put me off? No, uh, Who loves documentaries. But that's a true fact. Loves facts. Um, and comes from a similar background to lots of the prisoners and, uh, and gets on very easily with people. Doesn't, doesn't look for conflict, but there again, doesn't, doesn't shy away from it either. 
Ali's Mr. Popular. This isn't curry. I told you when we started this, my mum makes all sorts of food. I get shepherd's pie at home. Yeah, but it's not as spicy as that, though, is it? Don's a prison officer of many years standing. Spicy. And thought he would have retired by now, but the rules change and he finds himself still in post and not terribly happy about it. Do you know him? I don't know any of them. It's the best way. It was just weird because it was like everybody had known each other for years, sort of instantly, and I don't know why. I don't know why, but that just the way they cast it, we just, although well, we're all very different. And then everybody that they got in, all the visiting cast, all the prisoners that came in, everybody was instantly, it was like it had been like, well, where have you been all this time? The set is a complete build. It's not a real prison at all. It's built inside a disused concert hall, uh, Kelvin Hall in Glasgow, and it's full size, three stories, one main wing and two offshoots, all with cells, with working doors, with working gates. The whole thing, yeah, is, is, is a build and feels like a real prison. It's extraordinary. The show's fixed in reality in as much as, you know, anyone's perception of anything is, is real. You know, it's, it, it draws on my experience without ever, um, without ever stealing stories or um, obviously telling, telling the stories of real people that I come across, either officers or prisoners. It's, it's, I think the essence of it is absolutely real, you know, and authentic. There is a degree to which there's a sort of, we, we heighten things. Of course we do, it's, a, it's, it's, it's drama, but I like to think that it's a world that people who've been in prison, in, in whatever capacity, more than once, will recognise, and that's certainly the feedback that we've had. My favourite moment from when I was filming, it's really hard to pick one. Um, there was a few different ones for different reasons, but one of the things that, that really, that I found hilarious was Laura, uh, he plays Jackie, sort of Mrs. Bouquet voice, where she would narrate what was going on on the scene when people were, the crew were setting up and she'd narrate it like she was writing their biography. And I find that really hilarious every time. Been in the job 20 years, what does Governor Ray think he'll see that isn't in my record? Your tits. I know that the, um, that the board with all the inmates' names on the office has got lots of people who worked on the show written, written in there, um, including mine. We did also make up a prisoner file, one of the Orange Act files that feature heavily in episode five. One that the art department made up one for um, Eddie J. Turner, which is a reference to a character of, the lead character in a previous drama that I wrote called The Victim. These are legal documents, and they can mean the difference between life and death. It's usually when, whenever Stephen and Laura had to act in front of anybody else, because they're just inherently funny, skilled actors. There was one line that Laura couldn't say, which was knowing the difference between a penis and a vagina. I can barely say it now. For some reason, she couldn't say it, and the more she couldn't say it, obviously, the more she couldn't say it, and so that became a thing. Thick as fuck, that lot. Uh, I think even OSGs know the difference between a penis and a vagina, Gary. Mm, I love it when you talk dirty. <laughs>